Boys, yes. boys, come over here. Mm. I have something to share with you. Mm. Oh, we got cookies. Compliments. Thanks, <laughs> oh, oh, look at this two freaking bags. Oh, oh my god. I don't know what happened to the third one. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, there was three photographers. Steve, Chris, and Jack. <laughs> they are not taking the cues very well. Today. We knew you were going to fill in the blanks. You always do. But here we are at the Natchez Trace Trail. <laughs> All right, we ready? Yep, ready, ready. <laughs> Welcome back to Moto Photo Adventures, everybody. This is Chris. Jason. Steve. And we are in Natchez, Mississippi. And uh, in our night last night was really cool. We got to spend the night in the Grand Hotel, the Natchez Grand Hotel back there. Very historic old hotel here in Natchez, overlooking the river. And uh, this is the beginning of the Natchez Trace Trail. Now the Natchez Trace Trail, a lot of people uh, believe was founded or started by the Indians, but in fact it was begun by the bison and other herd animals that were kind of constantly going back and forth between the watering holes here in the Natchez, Mississippi area and all the way up to the Salt Licks in Nashville. And we'll tell you a little bit more about the history of the trail as we go along. But it's a really, really cool parkway that's been designed to go along the Natchez Trace Trail, the original trail. So basically it's 444, 441 miles long. The beauty of it is there's not a single stop sign, there's no commercial traffic, and no billboards. It's going to be beautiful. And whether you are pedaling a bicycle or pulling the throttle on a motorcycle or pressing the pedal on a car, you're going to enjoy it because it's a nice lazy ride with a bunch of historical stops. So stick around guys, we got a great episode coming for you. We're going to hit the trail. Lovely Howard Johnsons, loading up our gear. Mr. Chris Smith. Man, that was a really nice campsite last photo, night. Photo adventure. The campsite was great. We'd like to do the orange door review, <laughs> as opposed to the orange shirt review. Well, the white door in the bathroom doesn't close all the way. Is that a review? That would be a review. Well, that's a that's a one star. This is a recently remodeled hotel, and I will have to say that other than the fact that the air conditioner leaked water around the front door, and the hot was on the cold side, and the cold was on the hot side, it's remodeled. We are here at the Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site. I was going to say that, but I wanted Chris to have the credit. <laughs> <laughs> this place is pretty cool. My wife's a um, South Carolina history teacher, and um, she talks about this place, and she's like super jealous right now because I'm here, and she's not. <laughs> but I took a bunch of pictures. I sent them to her. And, and she uh, won't see this until afterwards, so you can tell right. her you bought her a what? I, I bought her a T-shirt. Don't you see, man? The T-shirt is everything. <laughs> if you can't get a pilot's license, you get a t-shirt. That's right, that's yeah, right. right. So anyway, this place is really cool. Um, the history of this place is amazing. If you don't know it, um, let's go, go take a look. Go, go, let's go take a look. In 1941, Tuskegee Institute, which is now Tuskegee University, contracted with the U.S. military to train African-American pilots. By the end of the war, a thousand African-American pilots had their license. This is where they learned. So from the control tower, they would signal landing instructions and other flight information to the pilots that were down on the ground. 
Well, this is the site of hangar number two, which is essentially identical to hangar number one. It was just because more population came in, more airmen came in, and it had all of the medical offices, all of the training rooms, the briefing rooms, a big space for uh, drying out parachutes and things like that. Uh, it was built in 1944 and then burned down in 1989. And the National Park Service has basically turned it into a museum in honor of the Tuskegee Airmen. The tarmac between the two hangars was a busy part of Moton Field. Cadets were dropped off here by bus and then went to their duties for flight training. Fuel trucks and medical trucks were often parked in this area as well. One can only imagine what they felt when they stepped off the bus for the very first time onto the tarmac on Moton Field. So in this building is where they stored the dope. Not the Rastafarian dope, but the dope that they used to put on the fabric of the planes to make them waterproof and airworthy. This is the oil storage shed. It's a ventilated shed that provided space and convenient storage for the large quantities and various grades of oil used at Moton Field. Known as the Tea Room, this small lunchroom was built during the initial expansion of the phase of Moton Field between 1942 and 1943. Here, personnel stationed at Moton Field could get a quick bite to eat. Cadets ate at Tuskegee Institute, but they could also buy a snack in the tea room if they had time. This building was completed in 1941 as a restroom, shower, and a locker room for administrative and support personnel. Facilities for both men and women, black and white, have used the building. It almost certainly would have been the only integrated facility of its kind in the South at this time. This is the backside of hangar number one. This is where it became real for the aviation cadet. The hangar housed the main activities for the airfield, including flight debriefings, flight record keeping, aircraft maintenance, and military and civilian management. Several smaller rooms surrounding the original space were added as the program grew. The door to your left originally led to the machine shop where metal parts for the aircraft were repaired. Through those doors you can now find the orientation information area. These are called ghost buildings. When the National Park Service doesn't have enough accurate information, whether it's photographs or schematics or details of that nature, and they can't rebuild it exactly like it was, ghost buildings. Young African-American men from all over the country came to Moton Field to train as fighter pilots to be a part of the Tuskegee Airmen experience. Now you gotta remember this was part of the segregation time and so they trained separate from all of the other fighter pilots. And if you consider all of the support staff that was involved in total, uh, there were 10,000 African-American men who took part in the Tuskegee Airmen experience. In 2001, George Abercrombie said, my eyes were open to new vistas. I mean, I just didn't imagine that I as a black person at that time would have this opportunity. We got a camera on. Somebody. Mm -hmm. We got a. Now is this a is this a barbecue place or is this a? This is a gas station with a um where they they got some the barbecue food? and they got the barbecue going here. We got to find out what the deal is. You get a free front end alignment with a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna be great. Oh yeah. We doing it? Oh hell yeah. <laughs> I mean we ain't got to go crazy. We got to get something. Oh, that sounds good. Or turkey wings, Polish sausage, dog, pig tail. We came to make a complaint. Okay, go right ahead. The complaint is that when you're running down the road here, the smell from that grill kills you right about that side over there. That's the whole idea. You know? <laughs> smoke that gets you, you know? And it worked like a champ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look yeah. at that stuff. Wow. How long you had that ribs off? Oh, come on. What's your name? Laverne Dallas. Laverne? Laverne. Jason, Chris, and Steve. Nice to meet you, Dallas. Yeah, man, you too. Nice little setup there. We were at the stoplight, and we uh, punched in the GPS. We're like, oh, there's a barbecue place. Let's go find that. And then we're driving along. We said, no, oh, that looks even better. <laughs> what you store any kind you want. What you recommend? Everything. Well, I can't afford all of that. And collard greens. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah see, so there we are. Any beans? Baked beans, potato salad. Macaroni and cheese, too, also. Okay. Nice. What you got wrapped up in there? Uh, that's a balsam butter. Yeah. 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 When you put them on. Uh, a couple hours. He ain't gonna 
tell you. That's what it is. He's not going to tell you. I have a feeling it's going to be a couple of hours for everything. Everything. I'm going to be damn. I'm going to be in damn business with a couple of hours. You know? What's the family secret recipe? It's, gr it's ground garlic and a little bit of soy. I got some chicken over here. Oh, yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? We're not having had meat in a quite a while. It's actually not bad. I'm digging on this. This is American at its finest. Roadside Victoria. guy just grilling. Good stuff. Out some cookies. Laverne hooked us up with some barbecue. <laughs> Miss Betty's gonna hook Laverne up with some chocolate chip cookies. It's massive and only tastes good. Get two. Yes. <laughs> He's got another whole bag. We got a whole other bag. Nope. You, you, you get all them. You get all them. We're seeing all kinds of historic stuff, aren't we? You did right. Yeah, this is pretty cool right here. Wow, that's cool. Oh man, I can picture the black and white photos right here. Oh yeah. Unbelievable. That's just cool. Riding where they walk. Pretty sombering. Well. Mm -hmm. Talking about our history, Steve. What were we talking about earlier? It was just, you know, when we were at the Tuskegee um, Airfield, it was just really somber. You know, you're sitting there thinking about how history changed at that spot. Makes you wonder, would Martin Luther King be rolling in his grave right now if... Uh, he saw what state we were in right now. Fe feel like we took a step forward with him and two steps back since then. Well, hopefully that'll change. That's one thing I like about a modular helmet. True that. We're right here. <laughs> Green light.